Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Today, liturgically, the church celebrates the solemnity of Christ the King. And I am basing my sermon this morning upon the gospel appointed for today, coming to us from the 18th chapter of the Gospel of St. John. And I will read you that portion presently. Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priest have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest, I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I unto the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Every one that is of the truth heareth my voice. Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. My dear friends in our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ indeed is the king, dear friends, and you and I are testament, testimony of that fact. And we show that fact, we show that he truly is the king by how we live our lives every day, how we treat one another, what we do on his behalf and how we show ourselves unto the world. In this 36th verse of this 18th chapter that I just read to you, we heard the following. Our Lord was answering Pilate. And he said, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. You see, dear friends, this is a very important point that our Lord is making, that our Lord made to Pilate. Because in light of this verse that we just read, in light of this what our Lord just stated to you that was recorded from by St. John, if we go back earlier in this very same gospel, back some 12 chapters previously, back to chapter 6, St. John chapter 6, verse 15, we hear the following. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force, to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. If you will recall, dear friends, this chapter 6 verse that I just read to you, what preceded this? What preceded what I had just read to you? It was the feeding of the 5,000. And so those 5,000 dear souls who themselves, I'm sure, were hungry and they were famished and they were in need of sustenance, they were in need of a good meal. And our Lord himself saw their need and he fed them. He fed all 5,000. But sometimes, as it so happens with human beings, what, what, what happened? After they had a full belly and after they were filled, 
They wanted to make him their king. And as I stated, dear friends, what happens with human beings sometimes, all right, very often, when we see something that fills our needs, that fills our wants, that fills our desires, we want to make that our king, don't we? Whether it's food, whether it's drink, whether it's money, whether it's riches, whether it's possessions, whether it's drugs, whatever example you can think of, whatever rules our life becomes our king. It rules over us. And getting back to, again, this verse, our Lord saw that they were going to make him king. They were going to force him to be king. The ironic thing was, yes, Christ indeed is our king, but he is not a king by earthly standards. This is why when I preach, I say to you in so many of my sermons, our Lord stated throughout Scripture, and you can read it for yourself, and I'm sure that you have. You've seen it with your own eyes, and you've read it when you open up your own Bibles, and you've heard me say it throughout the years. But throughout the Scriptures, throughout the Gospels, our blessed Lord would say time and time and time again, my time is not yet come. My time is not yet come. And so surely, when we read about when some many of those 5,000, they were wanting to force him to be a king. I'm sure he was saying to them, my time is not yet come. You see, dear friends, the ironic thing is that, yes, indeed, as I stated, I know it and you know it. All people of good faith know it. King, Christ is indeed the king of the universe. But again, we have to emphasize he is not the king by earthly standards. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9 states the following, Rejoice, O daughter of Zion! Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem! Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation. Christ did come to us, dear friends. He came to us as a small innocent babe born in Bethlehem. He did not have a roof over his head. He was born in a manger. He was not born as a king by earthly standards, where, in other words, he would be born to great acclaim and great fanfare. He would be born in a, in a, in a, and live in a, in a huge palace somewhere. No. Our Lord, the King of the universe, and the King, more specifically, of our hearts. He was born to humble parents in a very humble location. But he is indeed the King of all. Make no doubt about that. Christ indeed is the King. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17 says, Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Dear friends, it is us, it is you, it is I, we are the ones that give honor and glory to Christ the King. 
our blessed Lord does not want the honor and the glory that the world gives. He wants rather the honor and glory that you can give him. Our Lord does not desire to live in the most opulent mansion. The world has to offer. Rather, he would prefer to reside in the most humblest of places, namely your heart. It is there, dear friends, where our Lord prefers to reign. It is there, dear, dear friends, where our Lord receives the honor. that he wants to have. He wants to be your king. He wants to be my king. We need to make Christ the king of our hearts. Make Christ the king of our lives. Make Christ the king and the ruler over our daily lives. So often we make the world the ruler of our life. We submit to the demands of the world and what the world would have us do. We submit to what the world would have us believe. We submit to what the world would give us. We deserve far better than anything that the world has to offer. And of course we know, dear friends, in the bottom of our hearts, we know that God, deep down inside, we know that God offers us much better than anything that the world has to offer. For you see, dear friends, anything that the world has to offer will vanish soon enough. But the love of God and the relationship with God and the love that God has for us is for all eternity, dear friends. So this day, again, pledge your loyalty to Christ our King and allow him into your heart like never before. May God bless you, dear friends. May God bless your friends, your family, and your loved ones. And may God bless each and every one of us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. God bless you, my dear friends.